today we are talking about something that isn't often discussed when it comes to management of sleep issues. And that is we're talking about using the placebo effect, leveraging that in clinical practice and avoiding the nocebo effect. I'm Dr. Nishi Bhopal. I'm a board certified sleep medicine physician and integrative psychiatrist. This channel is for you, the physician or the health practitioner who wants to learn more about sleep without having to do a sleep medicine fellowship. And we talk all about practical clinical sleep medicine tools and tips. If that sounds relevant to you, then consider subscribing to this channel. And before we jump into the video, if you're interested in supporting patients with sleep, and if you ever recommend melatonin, it's really important to know about good quality brands. So you can get my free melatonin brand guide at intrabalance.com forward slash melatonin. I'll put the link in the video description as well. Okay, so the placebo effect and the nocebo effect are really a vital part of a patient interaction. But when it comes to management of sleep issues, we talk a lot about differential diagnosis, we might talk about interventions like cognitive behavioral therapy for insomnia, we might talk about sleep testing, sleep apnea management, and all of these different kinds of things. But we don't often talk about the art of supporting patients with sleep issues, no matter what that sleep issue might be. And really in invoking the placebo effect and minimizing the nocebo effect, it is an art form that has measurable effects on outcomes. And we're going to look at that a little bit today. And no matter what specialty you're practicing, whether it's sleep medicine, psychiatry, um, primary care, pediatrics, whatever it is, it's really important to know how to you know, bring this art form into your practice with your patients. The word placebo actually comes from the Latin phrase meaning I shall please. The word nocebo is the relative to that, which means I will be harmful. So the placebo effect refers to the positive health outcomes that result from a patient's expectations of treatment benefits, even if that treatment is inactive. And the nocebo effect refers to the negative health outcomes resulting from a patient's expectations of adverse effects, even if that treatment is inactive. And this term was brought into the sphere of medicine by Henry Beecher. He was an army medic in World War II, and he's credited with bringing about the modern study of the placebo effect. What he did was he was treating wounded patients in World War II, and then he used up his supply of morphine. So he continued treating those patients with a saline solution while telling them about the pain relieving powers of the treatment. His observation was that patients tended to improve with that saline solution along with his comforting words. So he wrote a paper called The Powerful Placebo, which reported on the magnitude of the placebo effect across 15 clinical trials. In his study, Study revealed that over 35% of patients experienced the therapeutic benefit from placebo treatments. And so this was published back in 1955. So this laid the groundwork for decades of research on the placebo effect. And now we use placebo in randomized controlled trials to compare the effect of a treatment intervention to the placebo. But how do you actually use this in your clinical practice ethically? Because you're not going to give your patients a sugar pill and tell them it's a treatment. So how do we ethically leverage this placebo effect and minimize the nocebo effect with the patient? in front of you. There was a conference in 2017 as part of the Society for Interdisciplinary Placebo Studies. And their consensus was that maximizing placebo effects and minimizing nocebo effects should lead to better treatment outcomes with fewer side effects. And they agreed that health professionals should be trained to communicate with patients in such a way to maximize placebo and minimize nocebo. Uh, and so that paper was published in 2018. Now how this might be relevant to you as a clinician is maybe your patient is struggling with insomnia, or maybe you're supporting them in tapering off sleep aids, saying to them things like, you can do this. Patients are successfully able to overcome insomnia. Insomnia is highly treatable. You're working on a plan that is going to help you. Hearing that can be very reassuring for patients, and it can help invoke that placebo response. You may have heard from your patients that just by making an appointment to come to see you helps them feel better. I hear this all the time. Oh my gosh, I felt so much better even just knowing that I had this appointment with you. And so we're going to look at ways that you can actually um, strategically invoke this response for your patients. If this type of information is helpful for you, then go ahead and click the like button. There's actually quite a bit of empirical evidence demonstrating that placebo and nocebo effects are significant and measurable for lots of different conditions, including pain, depression, Parkinson's disease, fatigue, allergies, and autoimmune and immune deficiencies. So the power of the placebo effect, it's not a separate effect, right? It's not an either or, but it's really a critical component of medical treatment. So the effect of any treatment is really the combined effect of your treatment intervention and the psychosocial components that make up that placebo effect. And there have been demonstrated neurobiological changes that are involved in this, including activation of the endogenous opioid system, dopamine, endocannabinoid, oxytocin, vasopressin, and serotonin 
human systems. Even empathy can be considered a neurobiological response as shown on PET scans. So this is not just this airy fairy idea. There actually is research ongoing into the physiological and neurobiological correlates of the placebo effect. This translates into the use of the psychological placebo effect into your regular treatment alongside the treatment interventions that you're recommending for your patient and also helping them to minimize the nocebo effect while also you bringing empathy into those interactions, right? Because working with a patient is a sacred relationship in many ways. Patients might be sharing with you things that they've never told anybody else or they really don't feel comfortable sharing with anyone but you as their doctor or their healthcare practitioner. So there is a real art form and I think as clinicians we have to honor the sanctity of that relationship that we have with our patients and clients and allow ourselves to practice the art of what we've been trained in. Let's look at some strategic ways to enhance the placebo effect and minimize nocebo. So a few strategies to enhance the placebo effect are to work on positive communication. For example, if you're supporting a patient with tapering off their medications, you can just say simple things to them. You know, a lot of people feel even better after tapering off this medication. Or as you gradually taper off this, you might actually notice that your sleep quality improves. Patient empowerment is another aspect, which is involving them in the decision-making process to give them a sense of agency. So for example, let's work together to create a plan that feels comfortable for you. Or let me know, what are your thoughts on this plan? We also want to build a supportive environment. Building rapport and trust is so important. It's just saying things to them like, hey, you know, I'm here to support you. Um, if you have any concerns, please share them with me. Or you can even schedule regular follow-ups with them if you have the capacity to do so to provide continuous support. And that in itself can be really reassuring to patients. Then to minimize the nocebo effect, we want to be mindful about the types of words and communication that we're using. For example, instead of saying, well, you might experience withdrawal symptoms. Instead of saying that, you can inform them that, well, when we use this protocol, many people handle this very well. And if you notice any changes, they're usually mild, but I want you to reach out to me if you struggle. We also want to manage expectations and set realistic expectations. We don't want to be dishonest or mislead the patient. We want to be honest, but also be optimistic about what to expect. So for example, some people might feel some initial changes at the beginning of this taper, but they're usually well managed and they're usually short-lived, and I'm here to support you along the way. And we also want to provide reassurance. Let them know that you're here to support them. You're not alone in this. We're going to work together to make sure that you feel comfortable with the plan. And if you do start struggling with this, we'll come up with a plan to manage that as well. Let me know in the comments, what do you think about leveraging the placebo effect and then minimizing the nocebo effect? What helps you with your patients in your practice? Let me know in the comments below. And then if you found this video helpful, go ahead and share it with another clinician in your life who could benefit.